Um, thanks very much for, for sticking around, and uh, thanks to, to Noah for a great talk there. I think um, she's really set up the, the idea of what I then want to build on, of, of once you've got that data culture and you've got people interested in what you can do, how do we then go about actually um, building our data science team uh, and doing that uh, around our... I realised after I'd uh, submitted the talk that actually... Uh, I should have switched around the, the way I was talking about R in this. And actually, what I wanted to talk about was how we can build a, a data science team from our users. So as our users, how can we expand uh, our data science team uh, around that? Um, so I, I work for Mango. I'm sure by now you've uh, seen us outside. You've probably seen the cats floating around. Uh, and I'm the education practice lead at Mango, which means I, I get this unique opportunity to talk to uh, a huge range of R users from people who are there on day one of their, their R usage right through to uh, people who are looking to see how they can get the most from R. Uh, and what I'm just going to present uh, this morning is some of the, the advice I would now give based on what I've seen uh, from some of those people that I've worked with. So uh, I'm not going to mention names of customers or anything like that. Uh, it's just advice uh, generally from uh, where we've seen it and where things go well. Uh, and to start with, I just want to sort of get us all on the same page about data science. You might not agree with this definition of data science, uh, but we've worked really hard at Mango to actually define and understand with our customers what data science actually is. Uh, and I just wanted to start with that today just so that we can all be on the same page uh, for where we're going from here. So for us at Mango, we've decided that data science is uh, the proactive use of data and advanced analytics to drive better decision making. Uh, and why is that important? It's really important because it's, it sort of tells us what we have to think about in terms of getting people into our data science team and how we can use R. Uh, so obviously, advanced analytics data, R is perfect for that. It's what it was built for. Um, the, the better decision making is where it kind of becomes interesting because that's where we start to think about, uh, as business users of R, how we can deploy uh, our analytics that we've maybe developed or prototyped in R uh, and how people are going to access that uh, and the industrialization. Um, so there's lots of ideas around this phrase that actually start us up for, um, for how to get going. So to give you some context, uh, kind of the problem that I'm looking at answering here, um, I have a lot of uh, calls and meetings with customers, and, and they'll come to us and they'll say things like, oh, we've got one or two R users, or, or I'm the, the main R user in our team, and I want the rest of the team to be able to do what I can do, to understand uh, what R can provide for them, how they can make use of it, uh, and how we can expand our data science team. What do we do? How do we do that? So that's our starting point quite often. Uh, and sometimes they'll have got a bit further, they'll have tried some different things, uh, and we can then start to advise them around this. So what's the first piece of advice that I would give someone, or what's the first question that I would ask them? The first question I generally ask them is to tell me about their team. Uh, so what, what does their makeup of their team look like? So my first piece of advice would be understand the team that you have. And what do we mean by that? Well, we could talk about the team in terms of data science skills, and something that we use a lot uh, at Mango is what we call the data science radar. Uh, but essentially, it's the collection of skills that put together to you can build your data science team around this. So uh, you need communicators and visualizers. You need people who can work with the data. Uh, you need the modelers, uh, but you also need the programmers and the technologists. Uh, so you can build up your team and you can understand their skill set in that way. But for me, one thing that's really important to think about uh, as R users is what type of R users do we have in the team? So I just wanted to run through a few of the different types of R users that I've come across uh, through, throughout doing the training and consulting at Manga. And I think our user number one is uh, who I would define as the manager. And this is quite often the person who we end up speaking to. The manager is, your, is, is, for many of you, I'm not sure how many managers we have out in the audience today, but for many people, the manager will be the person who is controlling the budget, who is allowing you to actually uh, expand your team and, and to build up the R knowledge. Um, but they're also the person who they don't actually need to know that much R 
But at the same time, they want to know lots of R because they want to know what it is you're doing and how you're doing it. So as an interesting challenge for us as R users is how do we communicate with our managers? How do we give our managers uh, enough knowledge so that they can understand what we're doing without them having to go on uh, an extensive training program around R? Uh, so that's your, your first user that you'll have to think about how to interact with. Um, the second type of user is actually who I think probably most of you in the room are. I've used super user here. Uh, I could have used the term advocate, so the R advocate. Uh, frankly, super user had better pictures that I could use rather than advocate, so that's why I've gone for it here. Um, but essentially, uh, you're the people who are really promoting R. You're the people who come to events like this to find out what is the, the newest thing that you can be trying, what's the next thing that you need to be learning about. Uh, and it's you who generally people are looking to for, for understanding what it is they can do with R. Uh, and you're probably the person who's about to go on this journey of, of building up your team. Uh, the next type of user, I would say, is the future super user. So the people in your team who will become you one day. Um, and these are generally the people who uh, they're really interested in what is possible with R. They will go out and they'll want to learn everything. There, there may be many of you in the room today who think, actually, I'm the future super user. I'm not quite there yet, but that's who I want to be. Uh, so you're the people who, who want to get that knowledge. And as we're building up a, a team around R, this is the easiest person to work with because they will just take on board anything that we say. We can send them on every training course and they'll take it all in. So... Actually, this is a user I would say you don't need to worry too much about this person. They'll get there eventually uh, themselves anyway. Some of the more interesting users, especially for me, are people like the casual R user. So uh, the person who will uh, happily do some analysis in R, they'll write some scripts. But if you start talking to them about best practices they might be less interested in what you have to say. Uh, so once you start to tell them, well, you should write a function to do that, or maybe let's develop a package, or somehow make that uh, into a better, more industrialized way of working, uh, this is a type of user who can be uh, not always challenging, but it's interesting to work with to, to start to understand how you're going to interact with them. So this is a really, really important group to identify as super users, as advocates for R. Who are these people in your team and what gets them excited? What's, what's going to help you to, to get them further? Uh, and the last group that I would say exists, there was no really good word for this, but this is probably a really common group that I encounter, is the, I'm going to take your code, I'm going to copy it, I'm going to paste it, and I'm going to figure out which line changes the colour, and that's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to change the colour. Uh, they're actually a really important group of people, again, for us as, as advocates, uh, because actually these are the people who are going to help us to uh, get past the sort of everyday analytics that, that have to be done. So these are the people who will happily uh, tweak your, your lines of code if they know just the basics. Uh, but I would say, again, this is a really important group of people to identify and work with. And uh, as much as anything, because you're probably never going to get them to build an R package. So just identifying these people and knowing, actually, that they can do a lot for me. How can we use them? Uh, but at what point do we stop trying to force some of the, the best practices around R on them? Uh, so they, they're the sorts of groups of people I've, uh, enc I've encountered. I'm sure you can probably think of, uh, I can see sort of some smiles in the room, so I think people are already uh, relating to people in their teams here. Um, but these are, are the people that you need to identify and think about how am I going to work with that person and what's going to get them uh, the next step? How can I get them to do uh, what I need them to be doing so that we can work in a really uh, good way together? Um, the next thing I'd say is show them what's possible. So if you're just starting out building up your team, show them what you can do with R. Get them excited. Uh, and the important thing, the, the advice I would give, is show them what's going to be the most impressive to them. So we've all come here for the last two days, and we've seen really cool things, and we're all really excited. But I know if I go back to my office, uh, there are some things that just won't impress some people in the team because they're not interested in the latest thing I can do with Shiny because it's not something that's useful to them. So it's really important to pick the right example for the people that you're working with. Don't try and force Shiny on them if they're not going to be able to use Shiny. Uh, so just to give you a few ideas of the things that, that I typically think around, around how to get people excited... 
Of course, shiny apps are, are really impressive. They look really cool. Uh, so for a lot of people, showing them how they can, essentially how you can take R away. So if you think about that copy-paste user, actually shiny might be impressive to them for, for not having to learn R itself. Um, R Markdown, so if you're producing lots of documentation, think about showing them R Markdown. Uh, and R Studio Connect, I'm really impressed by at the moment for like, automatically sending out documents to people. Um, talking about particular packages, so understanding um, the idea, the concept of packages is, is to us quite normal, but to some people that idea that someone's already written code and I can just go and get that from somewhere, uh, that's actually really impressive in itself uh, and the fact that that's just freely available. So have a think about the sorts of packages that might get people in your team really excited. Um, analytic breadth is another one. I teach a lot of training courses where people will say to me, does this really obscure seeming method exist in R? And the answer is every single time yes, because someone has already written it. It kind of links in with the packages. But if it's the analysis that people are after, if it's the, the, sort of the full range of different tools they can use, uh, again, think about what you can be showing them and, and showing them how easy it is to implement that. Uh, and easy data manipulation. If you've got anyone who spends a lot of time manipulating data, just showing them some of the tools around that uh, again, that can be a really, really impressive th feature for them. So pick the right example. Uh, that's really important. Uh, one of the things I think that is probably the thing we get the most wrong as our users, uh, but is actually the most important, is the infrastructure. Um, we're quite keen. Uh, we're probably all people who have tried to get around company policies so that we can get our, our, our packages onto our systems and bypass all the IT department and things like that. But actually, if you're wanting to expand your team and get more people using R, it's really important to think about that very early on. So how is everyone else in your team going to get R? How are they going to get packages? What's your IT team's view on this? What do they think? And having those conversations as early as you possibly can. So some things to think about. Um, how are they going to access R? Is it going to be desktop or server-based? What's going to be best uh, in your organization? Uh, will they be able to just go to uh, the R project site, and will they be able to just download things? Or are they going to have to go through some internal process? So making sure that's really clearly defined. Um, whilst you can tell people about all of these packages, actually it's really important to think about how people are going to get them. Uh, and I know this might blow some of your minds, but we work with a lot of customers who are not allowed to go to CRAN. They are not allowed to download from CRAN. So how are people going to get those new packages? Uh, we're all on Twitter tweeting about new things and go to GitHub and get the latest version of this package. But what about, uh, what about your IT team? How are they going to feel if, if I was to say to them, well, just go to GitHub and get the new version because that's got this feature that you need. Uh, really think that through beforehand. So how are people going to get the, the latest features? How long, if you are controlling this, how long is someone going to have to wait until they get that new feature? Is it a six-monthly update, a yearly update? Is that really clearly defined? And my biggest piece of advice for you uh, would be make sure that's all documented and ready before you start to tell people uh, about going to use R. Um, I think that's really important because as uh, someone who sat on the side of having to share information, uh, if you don't have the documentation ready beforehand, you will just get hundreds of emails of, how do I get this package? How do I install R? Why isn't it working? What's not, what's not going right here? So make sure you've documented that before you start to roll that out to people. Make sure it's really clear that everyone knows where they can access that information. Don't try and do everything on day one. Uh, I've seen lots of people uh, trying to tell people who've had a day or two days worth of R training that they should now go away and write functions and packages and UCI and uh, all of these different things that we all know are best practices. But if you try and get people to do that after a day's worth of R training, they're really not going to understand it. So don't try and get people to do everything right from the start. Think about the team. Uh, think about those types of users. So who's going to help you out on that journey? Uh, think about the future uh, super users, the future advocates. They're going to be really on board with that really quickly. But maybe don't try and, and force this on your, your casual users. So have a think uh, about the types of users you have and, and how you can actually roll all of this uh, best practice out. 
Uh, and just to get a super cheesy slide in here, plan your route to uh, what you want to achieve. If you do want everyone to be using uh, packages and Git and CI, think about how you can get there. So if that is your goal, what steps could you take to get there and, and what little things can you do uh, to actually get there over time rather than uh, from day one? Um, one of my last pieces of advice then would be to set up sharing opportunities. Um, conferences like this are fantastic, but you're probably not going to get all of your team the budget to come to every single event that is going on. Um, so think about how you can share ideas within the team. Uh, some of the things that I've seen uh, with other people, with other companies, uh, Slack channels seem to be really popular. So having an R Slack channel, internal forums, uh, internal meetup groups, uh, lots of uh, internal packages as well are actually really valuable. Um, but do make time to actually share ideas with each other. I think the, the piece of advice I tend to give the most uh, on introduction to our training courses is go find your super users in the, in the company and ask them what they are doing, what packages they are using. So as the advocates in the team, you need to be uh, making those opportunities and giving your time uh, to help other people, to help the rest of your team start to understand what R can do and how they can actually uh, make use of it in the best possible way. Uh, and giving that space for new users to say, you know what, I tried this and it worked really well, or I tried this and it didn't, can someone help me why? And, and giving them that freedom and that, that space to essentially say, why does this work, why doesn't it work? Uh, and talking through ideas together. My final piece of advice then uh, would be to pre-prepare opportunities to practice. And hopefully this seems really obvious, but if you send someone on a, a training course, um, the first thing they'll want to do, or many of them will want to do, is get started. They'll want to go away and they'll want to try it on their own data. Uh, and I get questions a lot of, uh, at the end of a training course, how can I practice this now? What should I do? And I can point people to things like Kaggle and say, go get a data set and try and answer the question. But it really benefits people much more if they're solving their own business problems, if they're working on challenges that are relevant to them. So if you're the, re the person responsible, if you're helping to coordinate that, that training, that upskilling of people in your team, before you send them on that course, have a think about how they might use R straight away afterwards, how they might consolidate that knowledge, what it is that you could do for them to, to actually help them get started. But really importantly, don't make it into an exam. Uh, don't make it a thing that they have to do and they have to do it by a certain time and you, you're essentially going to mark that work because that kind of puts people off. I, I don't like taking exams. If someone tells me I've got to do something exam-like after a training course, I really resist it. So make it a bit of fun. Make it something that everyone can have a go at. Uh, but do give them that, that opportunity uh, to practice. I think I'm just about out of time there. Uh, so just to summarise, these were the, the six points that I had. So remember, think about who your team are, who's in the team, what can you, uh, you, how can you use them. Get them excited, show them what's possible, get your infrastructure ready uh, and, and have that route through how you can get to the end. All of, think about your sharing opportunities, maybe your internal user groups uh, and how people are going to practice that. Uh, so that's the advice I would give uh, and I'm happy to take questions uh, at that point. Questions for Amy? Thank you for sharing your experience. Uh, and what about people who resist uh, using R, uh, who probably support other technologies and other solutions? How, I, I'm sure you had uh, such experience. How you deal with that? Yeah, I've taught lots of training courses where you end up with one or two people in the room who are trying to trip you up the whole time. They're trying to go, well, I use this tool and I can do this. How do I do that in R? Usually I just try and, and go through that process of showing them, well, actually, this is what's possible in R. This is how you can do it. My number one piece of advice, if you, are, you have people who are using a technology already, we work with a lot of people transitioning from SaaS, for instance. 
don't try and take that tool away on day one because you will get the result. That will make it so much harder from you if you take one tool away and just put in another tool. Try and have them run in parallel and, and hopefully eventually they'll see what you can do with R and, and how you can move and they'll get on board over time but, but yeah, you, you will get resistance at the start. Any other questions? Great. Okay, let's thank Amy again and it's coffee time. Thank you.